Hi guys, we are back with chapters 10, 11, and 12 of Recess is a Jungle, part of the Eerie Elementary series. Chapter 10 is called Through the Hedge Maze. The walls of the hedge maze towered over Sam and his friends. Going through this maze is the only way, only way back to school, Sam said. And if this whole swamp maze thing was a trap from the start, we really need to hurry, Lucy said. The monkey bars are on the far side of the playground, Antonio said. They're right next to the school's rear steps. So we need to go toward the monkey bars, Sam said. Come on. The friends began to follow the winding path. Antonio dropped breadcrumbs as they walked. The dark maze snaked through the playground. Sam saw the same things he had seen during recess, the swings and the slides, but everything was different now. Grassy walls surrounded the playground equipment. The ground was mucky and wet. Vines crawled over everything. Rocking horses seemed to cry out as Sam walked past. Their springs squeezed and their eyes bulged. A merry-go-round covered in vines spun on its own. It creaked and howled with each turn. Finally, Sam spotted the monkey bars. We're almost to the steps. But getting there won't be easy, Lucy said. Lucy was right. There was now a swamp below the monkey bars. It covered the entire path. There was no way around it. So what do you think they're going to have to do? Climb across the monkey bars. Maybe we can swim across the swamp, Antonio asked. The last swamp almost ate me, Lucy said. Maybe this one's different, Antonio said. Lucy, Sam said, do you have anything in your backpack you don't need? Lucy opened her backpack. She dug past her school books and sunglasses and pulled out her neon yellow pencil case. Sam took the case. Let's see how the swamp reacts if we throw this in. He tossed the pencil case into the swamp and it splashed onto the muddy water and floated on top. Suddenly, a long winding branch burst through the muddy surface. The branch grabbed the case and dragged it below. It's like a hand, doesn't it? grabbing it. Sam, Lucy, and Antonio all gulped. Nope, Lucy said. This swamp's not any different. Then there's only one way across, Sam said, stepping up. He reached out and grabbed hold of a bar. It was covered in vines and moss. Sam took a deep breath. I'll go first, he said. And then he began to climb. Chapter 11 is called Monkeying Around. Sam was out in the third bar when he looked down. The swamp below bubbled and burped. Muddy water splashed Sam's sneakers. Tree limbs reached out for him. Sam's hands were sweaty. There's no way I'll make it across without falling, he thought, but I have to. Sam was halfway when Lucy began to climb. Antonio was the last to cross. I've always hated the monkey bars, he groaned. As Sam got close to the end, the monkey bars began to shake and the metal creaked and moaned. Hold on tight, Sam shouted. It's trying to shake us off, Lucy yelled. The structure swayed from side to side. Sam swung for the next bar. There was only one to go until the end. And then, just then, Lucy shrieked. So it's trying to shake him off. And there's that, the branch, like a hand, trying to get him again. The monkey bars shot up into the air and the three friends held on tight. Sam gasped. We're 20 feet in the air, he thought. Slippery vines had crawled up the monkey bars. One long vine wrapped itself around Sam's hand. His fingers were being lifted from the bar. I can't hold on much longer, he yelled. The vine plucked Sam's pinky finger and he lost his grip. He was plummeting down toward the monstrous swamp. At the last second, Sam grabbed onto Lucy's jeans. He clutched the fabric as tight as he could. Slurp! The swamp water bubbled up. The monkey bar set began sink sinking back down. Sam's stomach did a flip as everything dropped. The swamp was about to swallow the monkey bars. Lucy gritted her teeth. Only one bar left. Using all her might, she reached out and grabbed it. Sam was able to scramble onto the bottom rung. Together, he and Lucy narrowly escaped, but Antonio was still making his way across. The metal bars dipped in the middle. Antonio's feet hung closer to the swamp. Mud splashed his legs. Faster, Antonio, Sam called. I'm trying, Antonio cried. I don't want to be swamp food. He quickly swung from bar to bar. and The metal howled as he drove off the monkey bars. He crashed to the ground beside his friends. Curse, sploosh! The three friends looked back just in time to see the swamp swallow the entire monkey bar set. 
Sam raced ahead. We're so close, he thought. His heart was pounding. He expected to run straight through the last bit of maze and see the rear steps of the school. He expected to make it back in time to stop Orson Erie from attacking the students. He expected this horrible day to be over. Sam ran as fast as he could. Antonio and Lucy were hot on his heels, but then he began to panic. He was looking at the swing set. No, Sam cried. We're back at the beginning. Lucy hung her head. This really is a maze and we're trapped. It's hopeless. It's not totally hopeless, Antonio said. Luckily, I dropped those breadcrumbs as we went. They'll show us where we've already been so we can take a different way out. But then Antonio stopped. The ground was bare. Wait a minute. They're gone. There they are realizing. It's like in Hansel and Gretel, right? Uh, Gretel or Hansel rather, leaves the breadcrumbs so they can find their way back. But of course, the, you know, the animals in the woods eat it. This is, chapter 12 is called, Is There Any Way Out? Antonio looked at the empty path. Who took my PB&J crumbs? He explained, exclaimed. Sam's heart was pounding. His eyes darted across the ground. Crumbs can't have just disappeared. It's not possible, Lucy said. Her hands were trembling. Squawk! The friends spun around. The huge crow from before landed on the seesaw. A piece of bread dropped from its mouth, right? So of course he ate the breadcrumbs. That crow must have eaten all the breadcrumbs, Sam said. The bird flapped its wings and shot into the air. Lucy kicked at the damp ground. It's like everything's working against us. Sam plopped down on the seesaw. I'm afraid we'll never get out of this maze. Suddenly one end of the seesaw jumped. Whoa, Sam shrieked. The seesaw jumped again. It was alive too. Sam tumbled off. <laughs> Sam sat up. He was covered in mud, but he was smiling. That's it, he said. I know exactly how to find our way out of here. You do, Antonio asked. I think so, Sam said. Can you guys pin down this seesaw? Wrestle a monstrous seesaw, Antonio said, rolling up his sleeves. Bring it on. Lucy and Antonio jumped on the seesaw, pinning one side to the ground. The seesaw jerked and jumped. Hurry, Sam, Antonio said. We can't hold this thing down forever. Sam quickly climbed up and stood on the other end of the rusty seesaw. It quaked. Sam was barely able to grip the cold metal handle. It was like he was surfing. <laughs> it's working, Sam said. Less talking, more looking, Antonio said. The seesaw was trying its hardest to fling Lucy and Antonio off. Finally, Sam managed to stand up straight. From where Sam stood, he could see the whole hedge maze, the strange labyrinth wrapped all the way around Erie Elementary. But Sam smiled. I can see it. I can see the way out. All right, we're going to come back for our last recording, which will be chapters 13, 14, and 15.